Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, we're gonna go through the Turks A team, aka Reno, Rude, and Elena, EX3. And pardon me, uh, I know I'm my voice is probably a little bit raspy. I have been sick for the last week uh, with a pretty bad cold, so I apologize for that. But I wanted to get this out as soon as I could. And the reason we're gonna go over this battle is because it was surprisingly hard. Uh, compared to most of the other previous, you know, EX fights leading up to a crash. So, thought I'd go ahead and, and uh, do a video on this. This took me um, more tries than I'd care to admit. I don't know, 20 maybe? A lot of it was testing with order of operations, which got to kill first, and finding the right balance between survivability and uh, offense. We'll start with Tifa here. She's kind of an all-around DPS unit. I've got both of her, you know, limited time gloves on, uh, which with the weapon parts from the most recent event, I was able to get this to OB5. We are on our way to OB6. Ultimately, you just need somebody who can do kind of hybrid damage. Cloud could also possibly do this. Uh, Glenn could also do this with automatic. Uh, you just really kind of want the non-elemental damage, or at least that's my strategy, because they have three different weaknesses. And with a utility character, it's kind of hard to make sure you can actually cover all three of those weaknesses, you know, efficiently, at least, you know, if you're not a high, you know, dolphin plus whatever. These are all stat sticks for physical, with the exception that everybody does have one version of X Sigil Break. We are actually going with Dolphin Blow, her new limit, because it charges almost as fast as anything else, and... A thousand percent, but times two damage when debuffs are on is going to be really big to help our offense. HP wise, we're trying to keep everybody, I would say, above 8,000 is the goal, or compensate with some physical defense because you're going to take a lot of physical damage. As far as our abilities go, we've just set her up for physical ability potency. We have the max, which is why we're wearing a cowgirl outfit to give us the extra bit of physical ability damage with that mastery. And then everything else is just fine, except for going for physical attack and HP. For sub-equipment, this is just good for physical attack. This is good for attack in general, and also um, physical ability potency. And this is mostly for attack stats. I'm not worried about anything else with her. Coming over to Sephiroth. I've set him up for ice damage, because the order of operations we're going to do, we are going to kill the one that's weak to ice first. So... I wanted to be able to do that as soon as possible, therefore um, making the fight a little bit easier going forward. We also do have Torn Wing in the secondary slot because the solid barrier is very helpful. There's going to be several times when they start lowering your physical defense and you will most likely need to be able to buff that up, otherwise, uh, like for me, I would get killed. And then we've just gone with magic attack stats and X Sigil Break. One good thing also about Edge Wings here is it does have the extra X Sigil Break, which makes things really convenient. Other than that, this is, I know, physical attack, but I'm really going for, with both of these, Ice Potency. And you can see here, I was actually able to get to level 7. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, 85% bonus damage. He did suffer, though, in, in the, you know, attack stat department. This here is just for HP, trying to get everybody, again, over that threshold of 8,000. And with Aerith, the most notable difference on Aerith is that one, we are bringing Bio because all three of these guys are um, vulnerable to poison or at least they're not you know, immune to it. Now, 40% rate sucks, but uh, 41 seconds is a good duration and it chips away. I mean, it does between six and 7,000 damage, you know, every three seconds or so, four seconds, whatever the proc rate is. And that is ultimately her best way to get in damage. Uh, I will come back to that. We've also got Full Metal Staff here, and this is another notable difference from previous builds. And I'm doing this because of the physical attack decrease. Um, I'm gonna say, okay, so if you only have a five star, it is low potency, stacks to mid. This may or may not be good enough for you to survive, I don't know. But starting at OB6, um, it does go mid potency right out of the gate. And I can tell you that this is a weapon that I have never, ever put on my wish list. So having it at OB7 is 
just from doing all the free pulls it's given us, and it's given me this weapon. Um, <clears throat> other than that, uh, these this is a heal stat stick, this is the X break, and for sub equipment, we have gone with two different um, buff debuff extension items the Shuriken and the new Kate Sith Marching Horn. And the reason is, uh, this ultimately puts her to 80%. And I thought that, that would be nice. I think, I don't know if it works with the uh, bio or not, to be honest with you. Um, it's an ailment. I don't know if that's considered a buff or debuff. Uh, but it, I'm going to say it probably isn't. Um, but in the event that it did work, that'd be cool. And either way, I feel like it's good for Heavenly Spike. And the stats on them otherwise, boost heal plus 40 is one of the highest ones. I think it's the highest one that I have. And boost HP plus 30, also pretty good. And the Nameless here is also for boost HP. So that's how we got her at 9,000. But still a very respectable heal at 2,200. That is my entire team setup. And now we will get into the fight. All right, as we start out, we're going to immediately target Reno on the far right. He is the one that is linked to ice. They will immediately start up their, you know, link prep thing, which is a triple physical damage thing. Uh, we are going to just kind of get as much damage as in as we can with the other two. We're going to heavenly spike at some point to drop the physical attack of two of them because Rude cannot be debuffed on his attack. We switch stances, they're going to use their thing, we're going to immediately Kiraga and then come back to offense and prepare for a sigil break phase. Here I like to go to auto, there's three different ones and sometimes with the way the AI behaves in manual it is not ideal, uh, so I find it kind of easiest to just auto through that because the AI actually does what it's supposed to do generally and doesn't waste ATB doing an extra sigil on one of them. Here, you just mostly want to uh, heal up. I did cast that um, Heavenly Spike again to give the debuff so that Tifa's Dolphin Blow would do maximum damage. And as you can see there, 25,000 I think is pretty great for a limit that charges at a speed of 900. And we're just going to try to get in as much damage once again as we can. Now, the only the only problematic thing about this is I wish Sephiroth was doing more um, damage dealing. But because we have Torn Wing on him, the AI is going to really prioritize those defense buffs whenever it sees that we're getting ready to be AoE physically attacked. Um, but it's not the end of the world, and ultimately survivability is a big thing. But... Rude is going to provoke you after this. So what we're going to do here is just hope that we have enough damage with Shiva to kill off Reno. And I can tell you, this is the second time in a row that I cleared this. And both times I did have enough with that Shiva damage to kill Reno off even through the provoke. Uh, which I just think is nice and helpful because then we don't have to worry about going back to him. Here, I'm using the Dolphin Blow with it because I was a little bit concerned that we didn't have quite enough damage in on Reno to actually finish him, so I wanted to give just a little bit of extra bonus to that Diamond Dust damage. But it is quite easy there to take him out. So, now we're back to focusing on Rude and this, you know, Aegis that he's put up, where you just basically have to damage him down. And I did try a lot of builds that... Um, you know, focus on him first even, because he's the only one who, for example, can have his physical attack debuffed. But every time I ever targeted him first, shortly after killing him, Reno would charge up uh, one of his AoE physical lightning moves, and no matter if I had him max potency physical attack debuffed, and even my team mid potency defense buffed, he would wipe my whole team every single time. So... I finally gave up on trying to kill anybody but Reno first because Reno is the only person that has a move that could literally wipe my whole team and he would do it like clockwork every time I killed Rude first. So that is why I had to kill Reno first for me to actually be able to um, complete this. And also I want to say here I know this is quite a long fight. 
and that is just kind of how it goes because they're healing each other and they're constantly buffing their damage and everything else um there's just it's kind of a grind and i'll be honest it's it's a pretty fun fight to do i think in some ways if you like that real tactical feel if not you know because of the fact that because it's longer there is a lot of room to make mistakes uh it can be really frustrating and i get that here just anytime i have extra atb everybody's healed and we're just kind of doing damage i am trying to sneak in those bios and at a 40 percent rate you can see that you know sometimes i do a couple in a row uh, before I can get one to stick and that's that's okay as long as you make sure that you're gonna have ATB to keep everybody alive here I go ahead and use uh, healing wind Aerith's limit break and the reason for this is um, we took quite a bit of damage and I know that's gonna get me up also she did not have enough ATB to just go ahead and land the Kiraga right afterwards so we're just going to do that for efficiency and if you notice i keep coming back to elena to do um, tifa's limit and that's just because like i said i don't think bio counts as a debuff towards that limit um maybe one of you can tell me for sure i would love to know the answer to that my guess is that it's not and i'm just trying to kind of maximize damage so i keep going back to her and that becomes a thing because of the fact that I know Sephiroth is not set up to kill Elena. She is strong to ice, and Rude is not. So, Sephiroth essentially can still use his uh, Aerial Frostblade against Rude, and it's just fine. Whereas, using it against Elena is not going to be the best. Here we finally got Rude just about dead to rights having him down is a big deal and if you can get to this point i can tell you you are able to clear this maybe you don't do it the very first time but if you can get to the point where it's just elena this is actually the most doable phase of the fight she does a lot of physical moves she kind of alternates she does some aoe and some single target but they just don't do the kind of damage where you're going to get one shot uh, very easily. Except for later on, um, I will get one shot <laughs> because I wasn't paying attention to her physical attack buffs. But ultimately, this is very manageable. And this is where, you know, at least Tifa having that hybrid damage, uh, it kind of comes in handy. Now, you could try experimenting, putting some sort of fire on somebody to make this go a little faster. I just personally didn't feel like it was that it was that worth it. And if you notice, I mean, Tifa's still hitting for like 23,000 most of the time. And, you know, I think that that's a pretty respectable amount. 18 to 23, anyway, we'll say. The cross combo, that is a single target, uh, which, again, Sephiroth is, you know, really into buffing himself. Uh, with physical defense because he doesn't really have anything else that's good to do at this point and so that actually kind of comes in handy as far as with having you know the ai um i guess do things that are at least helpful now here she's boosting her physical attack and i'm so worried about healing sephiroth that i'm i'm just unable to do a whole lot about it i do heavenly spike there i probably should have waited to get one more off so that Dolphin Blow could do even more damage. Um, but I think actually the innate, innate buff, sorry, innate buff that she, or debuff that she has, those red ones, I think that actually counted because it looked like her Dolphin Blow did quite a bit. Sephiroth, though, I am just still struggling to keep his HP up. And so, you know, it's kind of one of those where I, I almost wish that he had like a single target cure at this point. I'm trying to sneak in some bios. This is really greedy, but I do see that she is very close to dying. And if I can speed that up, then that's great. There you can see she has like five arrows or four arrows up on her attack, and she one-shot Aerith. So that's not ideal. However, I, like I said, she's almost dead. I can see the end is near. My first clear, I did not lose anybody. Uh, but this time, unfortunately, 
Aerith had to uh, sacrifice herself for the greater good. But with this last Zeng and Fist, this is going to be the end of the fight. There it is. I can tell you, really, really, um, I would say difficult. Difficult compared to the other, you know, EX2 and EX3 fights that we've been kind of used to, especially for veteran players. So hopefully this helped you clear it. I can tell you, based on how hard that was, I think there's no way that I can uh, clear Solo Crash. Haven't attempted it yet. But anyway, I'd like to know what your guys' thoughts are. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.